Hi everyone, welcome to another Dragon Image video. Today we're here in our studio and we're doing something that we haven't done in a little while. People have been complaining that I haven't made any how-to videos uh, and been making a lot of videos on, on studio builds. So today is the day where I'm going to be covering uh, lighting modifiers. So for lots of people out there that come from a photographic background, this stuff isn't really new to you. Uh, it's stuff that we've been using for years as photographers. But now with the introduction of high-powered LEDs from Aperture, Godox, Nanlite, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, we can now comfortably use those modifiers on continuous lights. Um, this opens up a world of possibilities. So before, with photography, you had all this control over the way that light behaved. And the way they did that with video was they used large scrims and flags to produce similar looking things, but with a lot more effort. Uh, gaffers used to, you know, still go to tremendous uh, effort to, to get the look they're looking for. But now with the ability to use modifiers, you can kind of start taking shortcuts, which will get you there faster and actually give you slightly more control without the effort. So the first thing we're going to look at today is we've got our um, Aperture 600D over here on this side and we've got a 120 centimeter softbox on it. Uh, so basically what a softbox is, is a reflective box. So the inside of it is silver, the outside is black. Um, and what that does is it takes all the light that that light is producing and it makes it come out of the front of the product. So we've got the softbox here. Um, as you can kind of see, this particular one also has a honeycomb. The honeycomb basically helps control the light, but the softbox itself basically takes all the light and brings it forward. Uh, most softboxes have multiple baffles, so they might have a baffle on the inside uh, and then a baffle on the outside. You don't have to use both baffles. There are times where a single baffle or no baffles at all is what you want by the look of the light source, um, but they are kind of part of this accessory. Um, one of the things that we encounter a lot is that people will go online, they'll see a YouTube video, and the YouTube video person will be using X. They'll be using, you know, the you know dome light or you know or or kind of other lanterns or honeycombs or beauty dishes, all sorts of things, and then people go, ah, oh, I need to use that too. Modifiers are kind of like presets. They're designed for specific circumstances to, produ pro uh, to produce a certain look. You can't use uh, a softbox with a honeycomb for every shoot. Okay? Well, you can, but you're limiting your versatility and you're limiting the available looks that your, um, that your video production will have. So the first thing you have to understand is that the honeycomb on a softbox is designed to control light. It is not something that you need to use all the time. Yes, softboxes come with it, but basically what it does is it makes it so the light doesn't spill off to the sides. In this circumstance, you can kind of see that we've got this pool of light occurring over here on this side. Whereas, on, when, as soon as you get outside of that, the light falls off very quickly. Um, but let's just say you're in an environment where there isn't enough ambient light. You're not getting enough bounce, the background is looking really dark. Um, you're, ending, well, you're using the honeycomb, you end up with this area that looks well lit artificially, but doesn't look natural. Well, by just removing the honeycomb, you can create all this additional spill. So you can see now the light isn't as controlled. It's now spilling off to the sides. Um, this produces a more ambient illumination. And this is important to know that you can just do this to get this type of control. So that's one thing you can do with this. The second thing is if you want the light to be harsher, you can then remove the front diffusion. What this does is it means that the light isn't as, as soft as it comes through and it ends up coming through a lot more aggressively than it would otherwise. And to the more extent, you can actually put the honeycomb back on in this stage to have a more aggressive controlled light. So that's just some of the things you can do with a softbox. Now looking at the size of the softboxes, so basically the larger the size, the more wrapping you get and the softer the illumination. So you just can't take a softbox this big and expect it to be as soft as a softbox that's that big. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take this softbox off and I'm going to replace it with, for instance, I think it's the Light Dome Mini from Aperture. So you can kind of see the difference of what that produces. Okay, so no accessory. You end up with no control and feel that goes kind of everywhere. Okay. So that's the first thing you'll kind of see. 
Okay, so here is our little mini. Okay, and this is what's referred to as an S-type fitting, originally made by Bowens. Bowens is a flush brand from the UK uh, that no longer, unfortunately, kind of exists. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so now we have this small little soapbox. So because it's physically smaller, I'm getting harsher shadows around the nose. It's physically creating more of a contrast between those things, and it's not wrapping me as much. Uh, you can see that it's kind of producing a lot of light kind of spilling off to every side, and that's really because there's no control over this at the moment. We haven't put the honeycomb on it. It's still just um, the actual softbox, but when we put a honeycomb on it, and then it pulls the light into an area that you can kind of see. What I'll do is I'll just grab the honeycomb from the last one. And these just Velcro on. And you can kind of see as I kind of hold it, you can see that it's kind of controlling that kind of fill of the light. The tighter the honeycomb, um, the more control you have, but the less light will get through. So it's one of those things you just need to really consider. There aren't very many companies that produce multiple size honeycombs for, um, for softboxes. There are some, um, but most of the time, they tend to be more of the hard kind of reflector kind of style where you end up with a 30 degree or 10 degree, 45, 60 kind of degree honeycombs, which kind of control how far that light kind of goes. Okay, so small lights can be very good for like just kind of creating an ambient fill. Um, so let's just say that I was in a library and I just wanted to light somebody, you know, with a little bit of light, kind of looking more like a window light from a direction. I can kind of easily get a small softbox into those positions. It's a lot softer than not using a softbox at all, like a reflector would be quite harsh. So having a small softbox is a better alternative to no softbox at all. But again, size matters. So the larger the softbox, the softer the light, the smaller the softbox, the harsher the light, generally speaking. Okay, so moving on from there, you might say, well, what about strip softboxes, rectangular softboxes? So one of the things that we encounter a lot is we get people kind of going, Oh, I want, um, I want an octagonal softbox. And you say, well, what are you shooting? And they're like, oh, I'm shooting products. It's like, first of all, a uh, round softbox produces a round catch light and creates round reflections. A strip softbox or a rectangular softbox or a square softbox has nice straight lines. This means that in, the situ in situations where you want um, a lot of kind of control. Uh, there we go. And you want to have clean, crisp reflections. A strip softbox or a rectangular softbox is generally better. So, for instance, in this particular case, we've got a large strip softbox. This one's produced by Rhymelite, which is a Korean brand. Um, and this is a 70 by 180, I think it was, um, which is quite tall. This is really good for full body type situations where you want to control light and you want a nice big strip, but can also be used in the horizontal orientation. So I see a lot of these softboxes being used in the horizontal orientation. And so now that softbox is wrapping around me. It's not as directional because it's physically large and because we've got that beautiful width, it's now wrapping around me as a subject. Again, if I wanted to make it harsher, I could include the honeycomb or take off the front diffusion in order to reduce its softness, uh, per se. But let's move on from there. So the next thing we kind of encounter a lot tends to be beauty dishes. So beauty dishes are designed for, uh, generally for fashion. Um, you can use them like a small, let's take this off. So you can use them like a softbox by using a diffusion in front of it. And then that would behave like a small softbox, giving you a very similar look. Uh, can you get on there? There we go. Okay, so now this is behaving very similar to the Aperture small softbox. Um, but one of the things that beauty dishes have is they have a dome 
that goes directly in front of the light itself, um, which kind of prevents it from going directly to the subject and bounces off the sides. Um, so you can kind of see you end up with this kind of haloing effect where the outside light is slightly brighter than the dead center. So this area here is, for instance, a little bit darker. Um, and, but what that does is it kind of helps create a very directional, larger light source. This can create lots of shadows. It's kind of ideal for fashion because generally speaking in fashion photography, makeup is done very well. The models tend to be a lot younger, so they tend to have flawless skin. And so stuff like this tends to kind of behave well with them. Whereas when you're photographing, for instance, people with you know, more mature skin like myself, you might want a softer light source to help hide any imperfections in the skin um, and reduce the amount of time you need to spend in makeup. Um, but it is one of those things you kind of encounter Fashion photographers love beauty dishes. They've been loving them for years. They are available in a couple of different variants. So for instance, this is quite a small one. They make larger ones. You can also get them in white and silver. Silver being a bit more aggressive where the white tends to diffuse the light as it bounces off, which makes it a slight, slightly softer kind of illumination. And then you've also got honeycombs that go on the front of those as well that help really focus the light into a small area, um, giving you a lot of control of that light source. Okay, moving on from that, we've got more traditional, just straight reflectors. Okay, straight reflector. Straight reflectors are designed for power. So you can see that this side of my face is probably severely overexposed at the moment um, because we haven't been playing around with the camera settings. Uh, but basically what the reflector does, it takes all that light, which was spilling off to the sides without a reflector and pushes it forwards. So that allows you to throw light over quite a large distance. So if you need to have more like a spotlight effect, um, you can do it using a standard reflector. If you want to control the light even further, you can put honeycombs on standard reflectors, but I don't recommend it with light sources quite this strong. This is a 600, so it would probably start cooking over a while. One of the things that we do get asked all the time, um, why are LEDs a cool light source? The answer is yes. But just because they're a cool light source does not mean they're as robust as the old tungsten light sources. So the old tungsten light sources, which had the filament which heated up, got tremendously hot, like ridiculously so. But the filament inside it could be 5,000 degrees and it didn't care. It wasn't sensitive to heat, which meant that unless you moved it, it was pretty stable. Like it wouldn't break, it would be fine. The other thing too is that if you broke a globe, it was like $20 to replace it, whereas an LED doesn't have that robustness. LEDs don't produce a lot of heat, but the heat they do produce needs to be taken away so that lots of the globe doesn't die. Um, you can get replacement kind of LED chips or cods, depending on the brand or depending on the type of light you have. Um, in, and get them replaced, but it's an expensive process. It's not normally done. Generally speaking, lights tend to last forever if you treat them well in regards to LEDs. They're rated at 60,000 hours. Or, yeah, 60,000 hours. So you, if, if you kind of put too many things on a light source which keep it from dissipating the heat, they will overheat and they will die. Just keeping that in mind. So for instance, I could put a honeycomb on here or a snoot. A snoot kind of controls the light. Um, but then I'd have to make sure I don't run it for too long, otherwise it will start to overheat and that can cause issues. Uh, a lot of lights do have safety features, so when they do get to a specific temperature, they will cut off, but you don't really want that to ever happen mid-shoot when shooting videos or continuous content. Uh, with photography, it's not that big of an issue because you can just kind of take a second, start again. Whereas with video, you want to be able to make sure that each take is a good take. Okay, so moving out from that, so reflectors do come in a couple of different variants. You do have narrow beam reflectors, which focus it quite a lot. You have wide reflectors, which allow the light to spill off to the sides a bit more. And you have everything kind of in between. Um, a beauty dish can be considered a type of reflector. Okay, so moving on from there, now we've got more kind of specialty kind of accessories. So this guy here is a Fresnel attachment with barn doors. There we go. Okay, so the barn doors are used to control light and you can get barn doors for most accessories. Um, you can actually get barn doors for beauty dishes and honeycombs. 
uh, sorry, and softboxes. Um, you can get beauty dishes for standard reflectors. Sorry, barn doors for student standard reflectors. And what that does is it allows you to control how that light behaves. It isn't quite as good as it used to be with tungsten light sources because LEDs tend to be a larger light source and so you don't get quite as much kind of control over the way that the light's behaving. But it does give you some control, which is better than no control. Okay, the next thing is that because this is a Fresnel attachment, I can then take that light. It's probably easy to show this wide open. And I can focus it. So you can see how that kind of beam of light becomes smaller. And so what that's doing is it's taking all that light that was going off the sides and focusing it in like a single direction. Uh, this can be quite intense. So if you ever need to throw light over an extremely large distance, having a really good Fresnel can help that. Um, you can see that the size of this Fresnel was quite large. The reason for that is because it's going onto a large light source. And so again, it needs space to breathe so all that heat can dissipate and escape the light source. Again, so once you've kind of got it in the position that you want, you can then kind of control it. One of the things which is interesting about LEDs versus um, tungsten light sources, because LED chips are physically larger, the shadows actually become softer as you focus. This is a bit strange, I know. So you can kind of see the shadows that are created by my hand are becoming quite soft. Whereas when I go to full flood, uh, that shadow actually becomes harsher. This is counterintuitive. With tungsten light sources, that wasn't the case. The, the case was that because the filament was so small, um, the more you focus it, the kind of harsher it became. Okay, so moving on from there, we have another specialty device. This one is called a projector lens. There we go. A bit on the heavy side. This guy here. These come in different degrees depending on how wide a throw you want them to have. So anyway, so you can kind of see the projector has this really clean kind of line. You end up with these kind of harsh shadows and you can actually see that you can actually focus that a little bit more. Oh, I, there we go. And so as you focus it, you can end up with really crisp lines or really harsh lines. The advantage of this is that if I have things I can put in there, such as films and so forth, I can end up with these really kind of cool kind of projections. The filter that we were kind of playing with before, which is this kind of little thing that kind of sits in here, you can get these discs. So it does come with discs, but you can kind of buy them uh, in a lot of variants. This one is like leaves. And so what you do is you take that, put it in, and then you focus the light to get the effect that you want. So this can be used obviously for lighting a background or for fashion or for all sorts of things to kind of get different looks. Um, you can also use them out of focus to kind of look like, you know, for instance, if you get ones that look like leaves or a window, to look like window lights coming through the window and it's kind of hitting the background producing that Sunday afternoon kind of lighting effect. So there are lots of kind of accessories. These do also come with what these kind of like built in kind of flags, which help kind of control the light. Um, so you can kind of control where it's going in relation to um, the subject and, and all that kind of stuff. So this is another accessory you kind of go on. So these are the sum of the accessories that we're kind of going through today. These are the kind of the major ones. Moving on from there, you have umbrellas. They come in a huge range of different types, shoot through, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we might just pause for a second, grab some of those and come back. Okay, so here we have different umbrellas. So umbrellas are exactly what they sound like. They're umbrellas. These umbrellas are not really usable in the rain. They do protect you from some rain, but 
actually don't actually do that much. They're not designed to be waterproof. What they are designed to do is either reflect or allow light to go through them. So for instance, this particular one is a diffusion umbrella. Diffusion meaning that the light is diffused as it goes through it. This one is designed to be put onto a light source that is pointing a at a subject. So one of the things that umbrellas aren't good for is control. So yes, they're extremely easy to use. They take up very little space, but you can see that there's no way to control where that light is going except for pointing it at a subject. So in this particular case, the light is going through that umbrella and because that umbrella is completely lit, the light source appears to be the same size as the umbrella. So one of the things that you'll notice is that whenever you're using an umbrella like this, you have all that light that's bouncing off the inside of the umbrella and actually is going behind the light source. So even though we've got light designed to light me, light is actually bouncing off and lighting the other side of the room as well. So that's one of the things that you need to worry about when using a shoot through umbrella. There are a few umbrellas that try to control this. This is one of them. This is referred to as a softbox umbrella. It's not a soft box that has an opening like an umbrella. It's an umbrella that has a box kind of cover which helps prevent light from bouncing off and going backwards. So this is designed to control that light that's going backwards, but you still end up with light going everywhere from directly in front of it. So it can be quite tricky. One of the advantages of an umbrella is that if you need to light an entire area or if people are moving around the area quite a lot, Umbrellas do a pretty good job of evenly lighting an area, which a softbox does not do. So one of the things that a softbox does is it lights one area really well, but then you end up with areas off to the side that get progressively darker the further out of the frame you are. The next type of umbrella I have is a reflective umbrella. By reflective, I mean the light kind of bounces into it and now comes reflecting out of it. Uh, these come in a variety of types. This particular one is a silver one, you can get gold ones and white ones, and you can even get ones that are halfway in between. Um, and basically, the more mirror-like they are, the more aggressive the light. So if you have a white umbrella, the light that comes off it is quite soft. And these are designed to be used with the light pointing away from the subject. So if I get my light source here, and I turn it around, you can see that this white umbrella is still lighting that area. But if I swap that over to now a silver umbrella, suddenly we get a lot more light kind of bouncing kind of back. So you can see that's kind of bouncing off and lighting this side of the room. If that was a white umbrella, it would be a lot softer. It would light up the area a lot more kind of softly uh, and produce a less aggressive glare in my eyesight. Um, the other types of reflective umbrellas are the kind of softbox variant, like this one here. This one is designed to be used as a white umbrella with a white cover, which helps produce a very soft, even illumination. And I'm personally in love with this type of umbrella uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, super quick to set up. Second of all, very large and the large size of it gives us that beautiful softbox-esque type of look. Okay, so let's... So very good for lighting a large area softly. You can kind of see all the way to the ground. Um, if I stand here, if I stand over here, I'm being lit very well, nice and soft. Um, this gives you kind of a large area for fill and allows me to then pull in a second light source with a more aggressive light source uh, or modifier, such as a small softbox or a beauty dish, and that will be my key light, and this becomes my large fill, which is a very big kind of window light. So again, very quick to set up, doesn't take up lots of sta space when you're moving around. So one of the things that I love about umbrellas, they can really go in a stand bag. Softboxes have that ring, and that takes up space. If it's going to fly, I'd rather have a whole bunch of different umbrellas, different sizes, imitate different size softboxes. Uh, I don't get that level of control that I would with the softbox, but I don't have to carry and assemble something that's quite large. I know that there are quick softboxes. Quick softboxes tend to have 
that mechanism where you can that the ring has the rods pre-installed but that means you've still got that large section at the back which is always going to be that size which means you can't flatten it like you would a non quick soft box so non quick soft boxes you can take all the rods out that means for transport you can get a lot smaller and a lot flatter so putting them in a suitcase for instance whereas the quicker soft boxes tend to be more of a pain to transport because of that additional size okay and the last thing we're going to look at today is domes or lanterns it's probably the best way to put it so these are designed to light a particular area um, there are different companies that manufacture this you've got light domes uh, you've got lanterns like light pro makes them aperture makes them godox makes them <sighs> Tons of brands make them. Um, the advantage of them is that they're designed to light a large area with soft illumination. Very good for kind of warehouse scenes or any scene that's in a, in a room. So let's just say we had a fake set, you'd have this on bar, but that would be the imitation of the top-down lighting that you get in a traditional house, but a lot softer um, than that. Um, and these are normally hung in groups to produce that soft, even illumination. You can get ones that have these things called skirts, Skirts are basically black fabric that hang off to the sides and this allows you to control the light. So it's just falling straight down. It's not kind of falling off to the sides as much. And so you can kind of have that level of control. What I'll do now is I'll take this umbrella off. I'll put this on so you can see what that looks like. First of all, you'll notice that it is lighting really a lot. Like you should, maybe there's flare in the wide lenses. You'd have to put flags up to control it. I might see if I can just kind of put it off to the side a bit. Um, but you can kind of see that it is this light, a large area of soft, even illumination. The skirts do control that. So normally you're hanging them vertically. So you've got the skirts hanging from the sides um, to help kind of reduce that amount of light. They do come in different sizes. This one's like the medium size, but you can get smaller little dome ones, globe ones, and larger ones that are much, much larger, um, that behave like a large softbox. And, well, that's kind of basically it. So there are obviously a lot of other accessories, such as snoots. Um, snoots basically are cones which control the light, but I would never use one on a continuous light source. For photography, they're fine, because you don't need to worry so much about, um, about overheating, but for a situation where you're using continuous lights, it doesn't have enough ventilation to really uh, justify the using of it. I would be very cautious when using a snoot with continuous lights. Um, there's lots of kind of limitations to continuous lights. One of them tends to be that overheating kind of factor. And the other thing that you need to be considerate of, if you're planning on using continuous lights for um, photography purposes, you will need to adjust your ISO or your shutter speed um, to compensate for the lack of power um, from continuous light. If you did try to get a light strong enough to kind of get the same settings as you would with, a, with flash, what you'd end up with is people that were uncomfortable because they're under so much light and their RSs would be so small and that might not be the look you're going for. So just keep that in mind whenever you're looking at kind of lighting and accessories. Dragon Image is a whole bunch. We always get more and you, if you have questions regarding them, you can always ask us and we're always happy to help and we have showrooms in City, Melbourne and Brisbane. So if you want to actually take them into the studio and test them, you're more than welcome. As long as you've got them, you can test them. Thanks.